Now then, back to today's episode. If you were growing your business at any given moment, there'd be one limiting factor which is stopping you from growing. So it could be lack of finance, need for the premises, the range of services or products you offer, even finding new customers. But for many businesses, the limiting factor is a bit more, a bit closer to home, and that is their time. So today we're going to focus on whether lack of time is stopping you from growing your business, and if so, what you can do about it. To help us with this, I'm joined today by Emma White, a partner at A4G. Hi Emma, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thank you. Oh, well, good um, Good to have you on again. So one of the big questions I'm sure many business owners have asked themselves, you know, if they're considering pushing their business for growth, and that's, what is the direction for me and my business? So I've specifically separated these out because... Well, they're two separate things. You know, the business owner and the business may have differing future paths, even though it may not seem that way right now. Or perhaps it is clear and they already know where they're heading. But what it'd be great to start with discussing, Emma, is really what sort of things they should be asking themselves to start getting this super clear in their minds. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think what normally drives businesses is often about I suppose the the aims of of the business owner to start with and quite often um, particularly initially that's always about what they want it to look like for them personally as well Mm -hmm. so I always think it's really good particularly you know we're starting a new year here so it's always nice to have some very clear ideas about what you want to achieve personally and just start jotting those down so that you they can start to evolve into some more detailed plans um it's one of the things we're quite big on at a4g is having kind of a clear plan on where we are now and where we want to be um you know sort of the next 12 24 months so that we can then break it down into little milestones that are a bit more achievable Yeah, could you maybe perhaps expand on what a strategic plan or vision would look like for the typical business owner? And, you know, how how would the business owner sort of define that direction? Yeah, well, I think quite often there are an an absolutely huge amount of things Mm. that they may want to achieve. But actually just prioritising their top three and we we refer to this as like your 60 30 10 plan Mm -hmm. Um, and we talk about how you know it's almost 60 percent of your effort should go into number one on your list 30 percent is bubbling away on number two and and your 10 percent is just teeing up sort of number three Um, and 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 that's really based on what you feel either has the I suppose the best return on investment for the business but probably is most motivating as well for you as an individual what you want to achieve because if there's no real passion for wanting to achieve that um you know it's just going to be a bit hard to get off the ground so it's really thinking about you know your priorities and what you're most passionate about achieving yeah and I like that I think when you have too many goals or things to achieve you can get sidetracked and you end up starting things half and then not finishing them or not seeing them through and I I think like you say just picking three to focus on will give you a really defined vision okay well even if that's the next three months that's what we're going to focus on and that's what the whole business is going to focus on and that's what the team's going to focus on and it it gets people stops people get from distracted I suppose yeah absolutely I think it's easy to explain to your team as well and sort of pass that down so everyone's pulling in the right direction um and again like they don't have to be massive goals but they have to be things that are quite achievable Mm -hmm. so that you can gain a bit of momentum with you know with what you want to achieve and it's just about isn't it just getting everyone focused in the same direction and you know you can always gain much better traction if everyone's working together on a goal that's easy to understand and that they're all talking about at the same time yeah I completely agree because I think another typical thing we see is that business owners you know end up spending too much time working in rather than on their business. So I think sometimes they actually struggle to set aside the regular time to step back, focus on exercising their business strategy. You know, what tools would you recommend with anyone trying to overcome this particular problem? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's probably one of the most typical things, you know, business owners face and it's so hard. And I think it's, 
and we all know it don't we like even in our personal lives we have kind of a lack of awareness of time and so sometimes there's a lot of things it's like oh I would like to do that at some point and because it's so generalized it's really hard to focus on or get any deadlines in place there's nothing to hold you accountable and I think for business owners you know you're so busy trying to sort you know deal with your customers get the business juggle profitability new clients staffing um but actually to start with there's two things I'd always recommend is to start with an awareness of where your time is spent so try and keep a little log for a few weeks of sort of every 15 minutes where your time is being spent within the business because that means you can really reflect on that and have a look at the things that you're getting maybe dragged into that either shouldn't take as long or you sh- you're maybe having to deal with on a regular basis that you shouldn't have to because if there'd been something put in place to stop things happening, you wouldn't keep getting drawn into it. Um, and this, the second thing would be almost like to list out all the things that you do as a business owner because quite often you end up doing things that you don't need to do. So mm-hmm. I mean, I always think the easiest way to do that is like a pack of post-it notes because, mm. you know, you jot everything down on a post-it note. You can then, if, you, if you're if you starting to work out, actually, there's things that you're doing, you can start putting them in little what I call swim lanes, which is almost like, well, this is the marketing and sales for the business. This is the administration. This is the finance. Maybe this is the HR. And if you start getting them into those lanes of all the different hats you wear as a business owner... Um, you can start seeing how you might be able to, you know, either find someone to help you with that or maybe it shouldn't be your responsibility because you've got someone in finance and yet you're being dragged into, I don't know, dealing with petty cash or making supplier payments because it's not well organised. You know, there's all sorts of things that I think business owners, because you've, you're used to doing it where you built it from the ground up, you get dragged back into. So I think that the two things can give you real clarity on where your time is going. And then you can start thinking about actually what you want your week to look like. Um, You know, if you read a lot of business books like I do, you know, a lot of a lot of the Sort of talk about productivity and planning is about planning the day day and week ahead um, and just having some really clear goals and also getting together like a list of the things you won't tolerate they call it so it's almost like all the distractions that you get dragged into that you kind of accept because you know you just can't help it because you're busy so you just take on all these sort of monkeys and you end up doing all these tasks yourself so you you almost need to set quite a strict discipline about the things that you aren't going to deal with and you're going to back back to the person giving it to you or try and find a different solution or um, hand off the responsibility because it is time is precious and we can all get drawn into things that are distracting and not the best use of our time yeah, and I like that. I think that's, you know, it sort of links with, it's not necessarily procrastination, you know, because I'm sure all business owners wanted to grow would like to think they're not procrastinating. But, you know, we all like doing the things that we like to do, even business owners. So although they might be getting dragged back into it, secretly they're comfortable with it. It means they're not having to push themselves out of their comfort zone and, you know, do the strategic planning sort of thing. So they, you know, they could easily be keeping those things where really they just need to take a more of a a back step and say, look, I don't need to be doing these things anymore. I can let them go. You know, you know, a big part of the strategic growth, you know, is it is linked to the quality of the management of the business, you know, understanding how the business is performing, being proactive with actively managing the business, you know, ensuring actions are reported, carried out, monitoring the business performance, you know, speaking to staff, listening to customers, all that sort of business management. But you know, if someone's struggling to get that management sort of right what sort of things could a business owner do to either assess that or just correct their management style in those areas yeah absolutely sure I think it's it's so hard isn't it and I, I just think business owners are so busy they just lack reflection time whereas actually reflection time is so important and I think once you've got staff you know we all put job adverts out there to attract the people we want but actually do we use those job adverts for maybe a more detailed version of the job advert which is what we would call kind of the job specification um, and the job 
you know a detailed job role description for exactly what is expected of that person we I think where it often falls down is that doesn't form any part of the process of managing that member of staff having clear goals and responsibilities and actually sort of we put those job adverts out because it's often about the types of personalities we want to attract or the skill set. But if we just put a little bit more detail into that and use it as a job role page that they should be looking at on a regular basis, because it clearly sets out what you need of them as the business owner and manage them by that. Um, it can make it much easier to kind of leverage yourself and not take on um, sometimes parts of the job that, you know, they're not comfortable doing. Um, or they don't want to do or they need training to help them with so I think if it's just those very clear boundaries and that's just the start of how you kind of start systemizing a business I mean at A4G we have a lot of systems and processes and the reason we do that is so everyone's got their clear responsibilities but also it's a way of cloning the process that you want someone to follow as best practice mm. and that's built on you know all the time but I think that's quite often why people don't let go of things is it's because really we think we're the person that can do it the best um which is which is you know yeah. it's probably true as a business owner you've got the most experience of the industry but you'll limit your growth by doing that so you know some some checklists and processes being built into people's roles can just help ensure people are following like your thought process or the process you've always followed to make sure that no errors occur and that's it and I think that's that's one of the you know the realities is there are some things that a business owner needs to let go and if they have a hand in documenting it how they would do it and how they want it done going forward training them their staff on that I think it will give people the peace of mind that it's going to be done how the way they want to do it and they can eventually sort of let let it go a little bit and, and I think it goes back to what you said about the post-it notes you know essentially Emma we could use our post-it notes and our lanes to start creating our systems and our role pages um so it's like quite a nice little process um to go through you know we're looking at limiting factors closer to home here and quite often this isn't just limited to business owners this is limited to anyone um you know quite often we all end up doing the same thing we've always done and then we struggle to get the results we're aiming for you know so how could a business owner maybe identifies the ways they aren't being flexible with certain things and and try to start do doing things differently in their business well quite quite often I think you're right I think the the almost automatic reaction to being busier is to work longer hours mm. um and then because you're working longer hours you've got less time to check in with staff or even consider what staff you might need if you don't have staff and whereas actually spending some time reflecting on your time, using the post-its, you can start to build out what you need. And quite often, you know, as, as an owner manager, you've got to look at the return on investment for your time. You know, if you're doing things like sorting out the petty cash or expenses for employees or picking up the milk or opening the post, you know, these aren't things that are testing, you know, testing your abilities. And they're certainly not worth you know the owner manager's time and so, so this is how you can just develop little areas where you bring in additional staff and then you spend a little bit more time nurturing them through because obviously they're probably looking for growth and development um and it is you know it's I suppose when you're when you start a business you're not necessarily taught the you know you might know your industry but dealing with people is very different um I mean there's there's some great books out there on like the one minute manager um and just all, all sorts of things about how you transition into managing managing people and it's just setting some time aside for that really yeah and actually you made me think of a, another book in terms of you know setting these systems in place that's the e-myth it's a great source of you know how you can get these systems and processes set up and in place um and starting to do a bit of division of your tasks especially I mean you know if our listeners are one-man bands with no staff it's almost where do we even start um and actually you know writing things down about what they do and don't do and you can then sort of prioritize you know a business owner's probably most business owners best strength is going to be customer relationship I would have thought you know um you know that's how you started your business you know talking to people selling your product or service and that's probably where you need to 
be like you know if you want to grow at least but you need the infrastructure underneath um to be right in order to allow allow the growth behind that um so you know sort of in, di- in addition to all of this we not, might need to consider <clears throat> excuse me, our knowledge, experience and skills of either ourselves or our team, you know, um, because we might not, even the business owner might not be at the level yet required to push the growth thereafter. And so in order to facilitate that growth, they need to push themselves into a position of leadership instead of a position of doing, um, you know, which they may not be currently doing yet. So in terms of a business owner's sort of leadership and management skills, which you just mentioned, Emma, probably doesn't necessarily get taught um, at any point for a business owner. You know, how could they start to look at growing their business um, and themselves into the leader which it will need upon its growth, growth plans evolving? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we work with quite a lot of clients where we have um, a pre-year meeting and that's a meeting sort of six to eight weeks before your year end so that we talk to people about their strategy. And part of the advantage of this is obviously we do some detailed notes from those meetings and we set out the aims for the business going forward. And, you know, we can kind of help hold them accountable. So it's really good for all business owners to have someone in their kind of close circle that they can kind of share their dreams with and what they're planning for the business and hold them a little bit accountable and also hold themselves accountable like they need a little check-in point but I certainly think there are you know there's some really good books out there you know we're happy to talk to anyone about some of the books we read that might just steer down a path or can work towards certain problems um but also one of the things that we're building into our business growth breakthrough program is actually a little training tool isn't it charlotte that we've got Mm. to that will give training courses online little bite-sized pieces that can be used for owner managers and kind of those manager or those staff that you want to get into a more manager like position so that they can start working on their development as well in terms of really about organization and productivity yeah well they say you know leaders are readers aren't they and I think if you can set example for your team of how you know, how you're constantly learning, even as a business owner, you're constantly learning and and adapting and changing. That will just feed from your team with your training programs and the way you speak to them, the way you communicate with them. And they will pick that up and eventually, you know, you, you want to cultivate a culture that is continually learning and wanting to grow and develop and push. And that's that that's how you'll take the team with you rather than sort of you will end up growing and you'll leave your team behind and you need your team behind you you know, in order to help you push the growth, because invariably, you're probably not going to be able to do it all on your own. Um, And I think that leads me on to the next bit, you know, we will end up needing help. You know, even if you're a small five employees, if you want to 10x, 20x, whatever it is your turnover, you're going to need some help. Um, You're going to need more staff um, probably to do this. Um, Even if you use technology and things like that, you're going to need a team. We're obviously going to cover this in a lot more detail later within this series. But Emma, could you just maybe just give us some sort of good advice here about where to start with ensuring that our team are geared up and ready to support rather than hinder our growth plans? I mean, absolutely. I mean, some of the best best businesses sort of we work with, certainly I work with, they're very clear um, to the whole of staff about the plans for the business for the coming year but also the things they've got in place are job roles and also regular review processes I think it's one of those things that most businesses see it see as this sort of little HR requirement that's just about pay mm-hmm. um and I, th- I think you've got to turn that on its head a bit. You know, if you need someone to develop quite quickly, you, you've got to book their check-ins. You know, that might be that you need to book them in quarterly and talk to them about what they're doing in their job, their strengths and their weaknesses and what they need to work on. And just keep evolving that process and educating them about what where you're trying to take the business and what you need from them to do that. Uh, you know, I think people are quite willing to you know, they, they work really hard if they feel like you believe in them. Mm. But quite often it's people get recruited into a role and it's just a case of, oh, we think you should know how to do that role and you just come in and you just do that role. Mm. Um, so it is, you know, especially anyone that shows enthusiasm and stuff, it is 
getting the job, like you say, the job roles, some processes in place, but just that regular time with them to talk mm-hmm. about the pros and cons of what's going on at the moment, you know, what they're doing really well and you want them to do more of, but it might be that they've got someone reporting to them that they're not dealing with particularly well. Yeah. And it's just trying to keep that process flowing so that the business can gain momentum. Yeah, I completely agree. I completely agree. Well, another key complaint is, you know, there is just not enough hours in the day. Um, and from a more personal, probably less business specific perspective, could you perhaps run through some areas where we recommend analysing just to ensure you're setting yourself up for sort of maximising the short amount of time you do have to run your business? I mean, I know you touched on it at the beginning. Um, but yeah, any more specific things in terms of analysing, you know, where, where we are? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it is good to keep a little regular check on your time, as I said, but I think it's also important to be kind of in charge of your day. So I I don't know, some of our listeners may have read the 5am club. It's quite a funny book. And actually, um, reading that and working with my business coach, I realised that there's some things I do in the morning to feel like I'm winning. Mm-hmm. Um, just from a personal perspective. So, you know, like I, I get up at 5.30, I go downstairs, I make sure the dishwasher's unloaded, a wash is on and the clothes from the day before are all put away. And I have this little routine and I didn't even realise I had it. Mm-hmm. Um, just to be in charge of the day, the same as, you know, I tend to be a bit religious about what I eat for breakfast and taking my vitamins and stuff like that, just so I can be... Mm. in front um and then I think once you feel like you're in that mindset you then look at you know you get into work a little bit earlier you look at your plan um sort of your I mean I look at my quarterly goals break those down into what I need to do this week make sure I've got time set aside in my diary um to do those and so that I have very clear parts of the day where you switch hats because I think you know as a owner manager you have to switch hats all the time and if you're doing it too often it can be really distracting so sometimes it's almost like you need to go in with a right I'm focused on sales today or I'm focused on operations or I'm going to reflect on the finances and just try and start sort of having your having a bit of a routine around when you do certain things yeah, and I like, I like that. Um, you know, getting getting ahead of the day because there's nothing worse than sort of running behind, getting stuck at traffic. You straight in the office, people are pulling your arm. You haven't even sat down yet at your desk or had a cup of coffee or whatever it might be. And before you know it, it's lunchtime and you're firefighting and you haven't actually done anything you want to do. And it, I think it's it, it's not just a business owner. This happens all the time, but especially for a business owner, maybe you know, maybe the morning isn't for you. You got to find out when is the right time for you. Maybe you're a night owl. Maybe it's you want you do it before you go to bed, so your mind's wearing overnight. I don't know what it is, but like getting your day set up in the morning or having some time, even if that's half an hour, even if it's an hour before the chaos of the running the day gets away from you. Maybe that's the time that you sit down and think of your strategic goal. So throughout the day, you think your decisions will be. Is that reaching, helping me reach my goal? Is that decision going to help me reach my goal? So that you set your day up, you know, like you say, Emma, set your day up right from the beginning so that anything that happens during the day you've got control over. So I really like that. Um, so thank you, Emma. Like this has given us fantastic insight into you know, sort of how lack of time can be stopping people from growing their business. And it is a key limiting factor, which really often gets overlooked and sort of just accepted that we just don't have enough time in the uh, you know, time of the day, but it doesn't have to be like that. Um, I mean, do you have any final pieces of all practical advice or perhaps a case study you can share with us where you've seen um, and overcome this with a business owner? I mean, one of the things I have done with a number of clients is the post-it note thing where you suddenly realise that actually as the business owner, they are opening the post, they're going to buy milk mm-hmm. and things like that. And it's like, actually, you know, if you had two hours of administration help twice a week, that gets rid of that at mm-hmm. quite a low hourly rate. Mm. Um, and it just frees you up to not have silly distractions like that on your mind. I mean, who needs to be, go, you know, buying the, worried about whether you've got enough milk for coffee? It's just not, it shouldn't be yeah. something the business owner, if he's got other staff, needs, needs to worry about. Yeah, so even- it's trying to get rid of those little worries. But I think my biggest tip is actually start reflecting on how your time is broken down throughout the day and week Mm -hmm. if you do that for a couple of weeks you will soon see the bits you can chop out or maybe doing less time 
it, re it really is about starting to reflect and you know I mean they say about dream boards don't they but I have I'm one for having a very clear list written down of your priorities brilliant well thank you so much for joining us today Emma oh thank you so much for having me this is something that you know I'm I'm really passionate about and actually I've spent quite a lot of time working on myself because I think there's despite the fact that we're accountants and we monitor our time all the time there's always room for improvement so you know it is quite important and what I've realized is if you let it seep into you know extended hours it just impacts your home life and actually your energy levels so having some disciplines around it can really help brilliant thank you thank you so much